brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the cabin. Two out of three are gone. Wheeler and AJ with you. Uh, mornings at the cabin on your Wednesday morning. Uh, Scott is, uh, or Lecter, as he likes to be called. Lecter. Had a, had a late hockey game last night, so he's taking the morning off. And Ollie, still across the pond. AJ, dutifully filling in. Not really filling in. You, you're a mainstay now. You're part of the crew. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, like a regular sub. The morning crew. We make, lo- we make loud noises. We make people uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm like a first cousin. First cousin. Yeah. Once removed. Once removed. Um, uh, this morning coming up, a uh, spe- very special guest. We got a uh, premiere song Yep. from the world famous pit. Kind of. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of a premiere. They've recorded it. Yes. So now it's new. Yes. Once, once was old is new again. Refreshed. And also coming up uh, at around 8 o'clock, Flora and the Fireweeds will be joining us. Live. They are, yeah, absolutely live. Well, I, mean, I, I would hope it was live. Um, and they are playing uh, the Chills and Thrills back, uh, the, the Chills and Thrills uh, night tomorrow at the Snow King Winter Festival. Check your calendar at snowking.ca. That'll be starting up at about 8. So they'll be here to play a little bit of live music at around 8 o'clock. Can't wait. Always a pleasure to have them. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's no TP in town. <laughs> it's been uh, cleared out of the shelves pretty much everywhere because let it not be said that YK is not have its fair share of panicky dum-dums. I, I asked Sarah yesterday, I said, but why? And yeah, she that said, makes no sense. Maybe diarrhea? I, well, I think they think it's the flu. People are like, oh, it's a bad flu, so I'm probably going to have diarrhea. It's like, no, it's a, it's a respiratory infection. I, think I mean, you might poop yourself, why. I suppose. If you're coughing so hard, you poop yourself. It's happened to me. It will happen again. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. We didn't get a chance to talk about this earlier in the week. It wasn't here on Monday, uh, and yesterday we just kind of skipped over it. But I want to talk to you about it because um, it's it's just it, it's, it's pretty incredible. So UFC 248, uh, Wiley Zhang versus Joanna Zendresic. Yes. Which is how I'm pronouncing it. <laughs> You know Which what? I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Gets the message across. Yeah, that's right. Um, they uh, they are in the straw weight straw weight category. So pretty light, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Um, I think it's that's one twenty five, something no, like that. Yeah. Something. They're being it's being called one of the greatest fights of all time. So I'm told. The the night before International Women's Day, the, one of the greatest fights of all time. But I mean, what's the the big story? Obviously, other than the fight being so amazing. Um, Zhang defended her title, so Zendresic lost, but they were both brutalized, one worse than the other. Very much so. Very much so. So it was a, it, what, what, what we would call a slobber knocker, uh, and the pictures afterwards, Wiley Zhang looked, you know, pretty beat up. She looked very swollen. Yeah. Like her eyes were kind of swollen shut her, around her mouth and her, and her cheeks all swollen. She looked very puffy. Yeah, like after, a good fight. A good fight. Zendresic had subdermal hematomas. She looked like Paul. You know, the I, alien? Yeah, she looks like an alien. She did, yeah. yeah and like, gross. She, just, I'm looking at a picture of her side by side right now. She's got very sharp features um, uh, and, and like... Very slim, like a very slim and very face. Slender, exactly, a very slender face, a very sharp features. And in, in like after the fight, her head, just mostly the top of her head above her eyes had swollen to twice the size. Yeah, huge. Huge. And it looks, hey, you know what? She doesn't even look like she's in that much discomfort. Well, I mean, you're, you're so much adrenaline going on. It's like, it's, oh, it's just that. Nah, don't worry about it. Just my scalp filling with blood, because um, that's what it is. Yeah, right. You know, I've you had, burst. I've had you, hematoma. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You, on yeah, my you, on my leg, actually. Ooh, God. Yeah. Um. So it it's just that's kind of making the rounds. It's. I mean, it's going to be. I haven't seen a meme of it yet, but it has to. It's going to be a meme at some point. I'd like to see the pictures now that she's healed up a little bit. Well, it's shrunk down now. Yeah, but typically it goes to a bruise. What What was that, AJ? <clears throat> God, every time. Yeah, no. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah. Should I do vocal warm-ups? Yes, like, what are we... you should. I do them every morning. <laughs> do you? No. Um, I should, though. Uh, but, but yeah, normally it goes into a big bruise. Yeah. So my entire, I had a hematoma on my quad, yeah. and the entire leg, right down to my shin, mm. was a bruise. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what happens on your head. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's. I've seen some highlights. I haven't seen the whole fight yet because usually you get like, 
uh, after a few days, you'll get like the whole fight somewhere. Someone will like have a YouTube video and you'll see the whole fight. Yeah. Not so with this one. This one is, I, I think they're kind of maybe playing this one a little closer to the chest and just right. kind of like, we'll release this at some point. And it's a great, it's a great, apparently it's a great, I haven't seen it, Yeah. but I'm told that it was just one heck of a fight. Yeah. I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan called it one of the greatest fights he's ever seen. And he's, and, and he's at, he's ringside for every one of these damn He's things. the man. He is. He's the guy, he's the guy in, in the UFC. Uh, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody talking about that fight. And how disappointing the champ, the actual Ooh. high, the the actual uh, title card was oh, the, the top was fight. The main event was boring. disappointing and super boring. boring. Yeah, and then you get this this fight, which is an undercard, yeah. still a pretty main event though, because these are two of the best in the in their weight class. Yeah, absolutely. And um, but like just a, a, another example of like the undercard, like just completely destroying the main event. Yeah, and Joanna's like pound for pound one of the greatest she's, fighters. She ever. She was fourteen and zero before this fight. Yeah, she's yeah, she's there. one of the best. Hall of Famer. And, uh, yeah, and just to, it's, you know, I mean, you see uh, this th- this fighting. A lot of people don't like it because it is so brutal. Because it is. Yep. It is. And, I mean, this is one of those examples where it's just like, you see? You see? Yeah. She looks destroyed. There's the argument that the UFC is actually safer, though. Yeah. Because in those situations, they're very short-term injuries. They are. Um, like, kind of just blunt force trauma. Yeah. Whereas boxing... You're hit yes. constantly. Could be over twelve rounds. You could get hit two hundred and ti- two hundred times. So there's a lot of a lot of brain damage, a lot oh, of CTE, yeah, things yeah. like that. Well, I mean, if you go back to like Muhammad Ali, the greatest fighter of all time, yeah, right, the greatest fighter of all time uh, in boxing was hit like two hundred and fifty thousand times in the well, head. and he in was, the head. He that was his strategy sometimes. Yeah. Like oh yeah, the rope dope. Yeah, he'd just sit there and get punched. It kind of looks like Joanna did the rope dope. Yeah. <laughs> just like I'm just gonna lead with my head. <laughs> yeah. Just punch it until it's over. I'm just gonna hit her fist with my with head, my forehead. I mean, she will recover. She'll be back. She's a great fighter. It's just like it, the pictures are like sh- kind of shocking, alien esque. Yeah, like she just alien-esque. walked out of exactly. Area 51. Yeah. And I don't. I mean, it's and this is this is. Uh, for joking purposes, there is a picture of her where she looks like the elephant man. I'm just saying, just like the way her like head is kind of bubbled out. It's uh, yeah. It's, if you can't laugh at your skull hematoma, then what can you laugh? Exactly. at? Exactly. I mean, I hope she's laughing. Look at that picture of me. Once the oh feeling my God. gets back into her face, I'm sure she'll chuckle. The mornings at the cabin podcast. Hey, it was early. What do you want from us? Mornings at the cabin. Wheeler and AJ with you on your Wednesday morning. Uh, you know that thing that happened on Sunday that's throw a, throw a stick in your spokes for the entire week? You know, daylight savings? Oh, yeah. Uh, the discussion has begun, once again, as it does all every year around this time, whether or not we should do it. Hey, the Yukon's doing away with it, right? You, you know what, Once again, the Yukon comes out ahead of the NWT with the good idea department. Yeah. But they are kind of in line with BC, and BC doesn't have it. Um, yeah. And so we're kind of, one of the things is that we kind of have to be in line with Alberta because we share so many things with them, True. right? So, you know. I uh, guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like more and more, I kind of want to be like, can we not be so close? I like to, to think we're, we're, right? we're our own territory. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of like a small neighborhood in Calgary, um, size, population wise. North Edmonton. North Edmonton. Yeah. Oof. God, North. Yeah. Great. Well, I was going to say Northwest Edmonton, but everything in Edmonton is Northwest Edmonton. That's true. Mill Woods is in Northwest Edmonton, and it's south and east of downtown. That would be why everyone from Yellowknife goes to West Edmall. Yeah, right? That makes North, sense. Northwest Edmall. That's what it's called. <laughs> North Ed- I mean, it's in the Northwest. N.W. Mall. N.W. Mall. Um, so, yeah, once the, once again, this has started. On Monday at the close of a lengthy discussion at City Hall, uh, Stacey Smith, Councillor Stacey Smith, briefly raised the issue of daylight savings with colleagues. And is there any way we can start to have this discussion? And I mean, it all. It, it and I mean, this discussion again comes up every year. But again, I, I believe it was uh, uh, actually I can't remember who it was, but mentioned it in 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 a Facebook uh, post. And I hadn't thought about that because we're you know we're kind of we're intertwined with uh, Alberta and a lot of things, healthcare, education, stuff like this. Yeah. So and they mentioned that we have to kind of do what Alberta's doing. So the the thing to do would be to pressure Alberta to do it. And then we can stop doing it. So is that the only counter argument? Well, it's not the only counter argument, but it's it's a strong one because we are so like tied in with them, like we you know our offices and things like that. So if we're an oh, hour behind them or ahead of them, sure. then it you know it, it it can cause some confusion. That makes sense. I and, mean, everyone in the world should just go away from it. I mean, probably everyone in the world should probably just because it, it was originally farmers, right? They yeah. get an extra hour of daylight for. Well, I mean, they don't their it's crop. Just, it's just. You know, they don't actually. It's well, just Saskatchewan one of was one of the first groups to yeah, go Saskatchewan away. Saskatchewan was like, no. <laughs> like, that Sorry. Is, that's the farmers of Canada. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those it's it's one of those things. It's it's one of those things that comes up every year. 
Uh, Counselor Julian Morse is staunchly opposed to daylight savings time. Has Every year. An unabashed critic of daylight savings time. Um, so, I mean, I, I, it's it. Noticing it again this year, obviously, you, you notice it every year. You spring forward when it's not even friggin' spring. Um, and you get that extra hour of daylight at the end of the day, but now it's friggin' dark during the week, during the during the morning. Yeah, actually, I really don't like that. I was yeah. enjoying waking up being like, yeah. oh, it's just hey, starting the sun's to get coming out. Yeah, yeah. I get up early. Yeah, I don't mind there being more sun at the end of the day, work day, but like yeah. when we when I was up at like 5.30 and the sun's starting to creep over the horizon, like that's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah, and now it's barely... Light outside at all. I mean, it's overcast, yeah. but still. And it's still light out at like 7.30. I yeah. don't really need light then. I don't. Really. I would like, not, not at this time. I'd prefer it in the morning. Well, and I, I mean, then let's like, when I have, I mean, if we're going to have to spring forward, like have it in April. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that way it's like still, it's still yeah, it's still, it's still morning. There's still sunlight. And yeah. then you have, I mean, it's not, you know, I don't, it's, it's seems pretty arbitrary when we, or, or like when it happens. I think we're going to go down the route of changing when it happens. Let's just get rid of it all. Let's just get rid of it all together. What's the point? It causes so many things: heart attacks, <laughs> D- people does lose it? their job. Apparently, yeah, it has a demonstrable effect. Well, I mean, that's the thing. This this is the thing about the algorithm of the human species. Yeah. If there's one thing, if one thing changes, it has a demonstrable effect on tens of thousands, if not millions, of people. Okay, like exponential. Kind exponential, of thing. Yeah. exactly. There's seven billion of us. Yeah. So if one little thing kind of enters the pool, mm-hmm. then it's going to affect us all. Now, like if you have a pool with seven billion people in it, and like you know a, a few people pee, it may not affect all of us, but in that little circle there. You're going to get covered in pee. There's going to be some urine. That's right. That's in- a terrible, interesting, terrible analogy. interesting take on it. Terrible Jesse. metaphor. No, no, um, that really clears things up I can't for remember. Me. I can never remember. Does it matter? It, it does, sucks. Does it matter? It sucks. <laughs> You're covered in pee. And that's uh, daylight savings in a nutshell. That's exactly right. Seven billion people in a pool, you're going to get covered in pee. That's right. Let's get that's, rid of daylight savings. Let's get rid of daylight if, savings time. Who wants to be covered in urine? Can we make it any clearer? Yes, that's right. So apparently, they're keeping tabs on what's going on. But I mean, yeah, there is like there's studies every year that show that like daylight savings causes heart attacks, causes stress, causes depression, uh, causes all kinds of things. Like, I mean, you feel a little discombobulated throughout the week. Like I yeah. yesterday I woke up at six forty eight and I was like, what the what the hell just happened? But it's actually supposed to be five forty eight, isn't it? Mm. So it would have been perfect had it been any other day. Throws off my dog's clock too. Yeah, he's like, it's dinner time. I'm like, oh, no, it's not, buddy. No, it's not, buddy. It's yeah, not. yeah. Your dog's like, why haven't you? Why are you waiting an hour to feed me? Yeah. And like there was a lot of there was actually a lot of funny tweets and memes going around on International Women's Day on Sunday, and and the and the, the, oh, the yeah. tweet suggested that's like it makes total sense that International Women's Day only has twenty three hours in it. I was like that that was, that was pretty funny. Nice International Women's Day, and you took an hour away. <laughs> you from took us. an hour away. Just get, could, get equal couldn't days. let them have it. Hey, <laughs> yeah, no, it was pretty. That's pretty funny. So uh, I mean, I don't know. You don't have to write in or anything like that. I know most people are against daylight savings times. So yeah, let's let's just get it done. Yeah, make What's it happen. the hold up? And uh, maybe the fact that the Yukon has actually pulled the trigger and done it, maybe that'll be enough for us to be like, you know, you what? know what, we're 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 doing it. If anything, that makes me not want to do it because I don't want to do stuff just because the Yukon's doing it. Well, it's a nice place. I don't. <laughs> There's agree. some things we could learn. I don't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been there, and I hate it. I've no, seen I, pictures, and I hate it. <laughs> I've seen pictures. I don't like mountains, <laughs> and I and I don't like you know sucking on toes. Oh. Yeah, sorry, yeah. the shot. The shot. Not the general culture. Not shrimping. Yukon. Yeah, okay. Shrimping, that's what it's called. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because they're like little shrimps. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. As promised, at this time of the morning, joined by Flora and the Fireweeds, who will be playing a show tomorrow at the Snow Castle. Go to snowking.ca for the full schedule. But uh, tomorrow at 8 uh, o'clock, Chills and Thrills, the Back Bay Fusion Project, who we know nothing about. Yeah, they've been <laughs> rehearsing in secret in a shed in Old Town, which sounds about right. That sounds right? about right. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, you will be uh, with them as well. Yes. Playing tomorrow night. Yeah, so we are Flora and the Fireweeds. I've got two of the six band members with me I was going to say... Yeah, we're, we're we're down a few fireweeds. Yeah, no boys allowed except no you. No boys yeah. allowed. <laughs> for, well, I'll just for sit cabin down. Radio, okay. not not everyone else. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, yeah, you got a lot of band members. It'd be tough to fit, fit everyone in. Yeah, we've got David Dow on drums, yeah. Patrick Jacobson on bass, Brian Wiedek on lead guitar, and then with well, me today okay, but they're in every about. band in Yellowknife. I know, I know. So. We're calling David and Brian at least like the Snowcastle House Band. Yeah, well, David and Brian are also in uh, the newest band, Great Bear. Yes, they're yes. in Great Bear, and I believe. Brian also played with Ryan McCord. 
And like many others, you know, it's a bit like a polyamorous relationship with my guitar. Yeah, I mean, that's what the music scene is in y'all. Yeah, it's very, very polyamorous. Polyamorous, you know, you just have to n- be non-exclusive. But yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but but healthy poly, there's not a lot of drama that goes on. No. Everybody shares. Yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah. And we're like, we're just so lucky in this town with the amazing music scene. Mm. And, and to have something like the Snow King Festival support so many local artists. You know. And Cabin Radio. And Cabin Radio. <laughs> yes. And this- absolutely. We're always we're always happy to have you guys and, um, and uh, hear any new music that you might have. Now you told me that the song you're playing today yes. is is based on a true story that didn't happen to you. It didn't wink <laughs> about a about a girl that got dumped because she wasn't wearing matching underwear. Yes. That is unfortunate. Yeah. So bra bra and underwear were not matching. Yeah. And my friend said to me, my friend Wink was like, "But I'm wearing solids, yeah, like they're yeah. they're color coordinated yeah. solids, but they like I don't." She seemed it was unfair, and I was like, "I really don't think that's the point." Oh, okay, right? so they were like, they were earth tones, maybe yeah, like they were kind yeah. of matching. It yeah, wasn't exactly. like hot pink and beige. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like I don't know because it didn't happen to me, but of course I kind of was like, <laughs> "Thank you for making that clear again for the third time." <laughs> <laughs> I just said. Well, I really don't think that's the point. Like, yeah. you should be able to just wear whatever underwear you want. And have, I, or nothing and, at all. Or nothing at all. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I want to now know the status of everyone around this table's underwear today, but w- let's not go there. I'm wearing blue underwear. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. But I mean, I don't have to match with anything. I mean, I'm, it matches my jeans because they're also blue. Oh, that's that's lovely. I'm not even wearing matching socks. so. I don't think matching socks matter either. The, yes. I mean, you're supposed to take those off during, during anyway. <laughs> you're wearing socks during, you might get dumped as well. <laughs> yeah, Unless you're in a houseboat. I feel rude. like if you're in a houseboat or in an old town oh. shack, it's like I'm leaving my socks on. Fair. It's Fair, cold. Fair. It's cold. There's a bre- There's a draft. There's a draft. Yeah. You know, that's that totally makes sense. Any any old school yelling efforts whose parents lived in old town or in a houseboat were probably conceived with socks on. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't want to imagine that. I, I know I was conceived in Northlands anyways. Which oh. was like a bougie neighborhood back in the day. Yeah. yeah, it was away from downtown. Yeah, like away from all those all squatters those, in old town. Yeah, the new trailers. Wow, this <laughs> oh, is the future. Man. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful stuff. The whole city's gonna be like this soon. <laughs> yeah. and it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, what's the name of the song? It's called "Mismatching Pants." So I did write it in England, okay. which where underwear is called pants. Yes, is and, it? Yes, N- mismatching knickers. I would think. Yes, but pants is. I wish Ollie was here. He would back me up on this. Pants, I suppose. Like, I would go around all the time when I lived there being like, oh, I've got something on my pants. And they would like, read too much information. Yeah, right. they're trousers. Yeah. But I do want to mention, because they haven't said anything yet, that I have my yes, beautiful please. singers here with me, <laughs> Alyssa Holland and uh, Eva Paul. Yes. Guys, welcome. are you wearing matching underwear today? I, yes or no? I'll go with coordinated, not matching. Coordinated. Oh, no, I'm totally at risk here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just think you have better things to do in your life, right? Than, and, yeah. and coordinated could mean a lot of things. It means you're wearing underwear and a bra. Yeah. They're, they're, I've coordinated my things. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's a reason I keep almost nothing but black in my wardrobe. There you it go. It makes things easy. That's Very right. Very smart. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get to it. Okay. Show's tomorrow night, eight o'clock at, at the Snow Castle. Yeah. Like all other shows, you can get tickets during the afternoon mm-hmm. on the day or at the door. So awesome. no buying in advance. Okay. Now yeah. we're going to do a little jostling here. Yes. Okay. You each have a mic. I'm going to put the other mic down for the for the uke here because you are carrying a uke, which is awesome. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to hear this. So let's uh, let's do a little jostling. I'm just going to shut out this mic for a second while we move. And you two talk for a second. <laughs> well, Alyssa, how do you feel about this? How do I feel about dead air? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit awkward. A little nervous, I got to say. <laughs> All right, There's very good, very I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank you for the person. sweet cover. Um, okay, so I'm just going to move this uh, down, and we'll put that up. You want to just play a little uke for me there? Oh, that's very nice. Oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to adjust these levels just a little bit. I'm just going to move this over, and we'll point it towards the uke. Thank and you. sorry, what's the song called again? Mismatching Pants, Floor and the Fireweeds. Okay, I don't even need to introduce it. Okay, let's go. Okay. And leopard print spots for our first date. Laces and corsets and all kinds of fishnets just for you. But fellas, 
A girl can't do laundry every day. And sometimes the red ones, they get washed the wrong way. And still, you look at me with the balls to say, those don't match. My stunning intellect always came second best to my lingerie. My baking was flawless. I had conversation prowess. But to you, that's just okay. You know, most men be happy to have a girl in their bed i'm here but you would rather play xbox instead over here i think that pornography has gone to your head because you. i don't match Nice. That was lovely. Thank you very, very nice. much. Pardon me. Oh, God. I got choked up. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, wonderful, as always. You always have such tight harmonies. It sounds beautiful. Thanks. Um, and what a, what a great song. That's awesome. And that didn't happen to you. No. Okay, sure. 100%. Uh, no, absolutely believe you. Absolutely 100%. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, obviously, uh, tomorrow you got a, a whole set prepared. And yes. um, I'm, you know, I mean, I wish I could. Oh, thanks. <laughs> tomorrow night at the Snow Castle. Go to snowking.ca for the full schedule. But tomorrow night, the Back uh, Back Bay Fusion Project and Floor in the Fireweeds playing at 8 o'clock. Tickets at the door uh, during the afternoon uh, at the Snow Castle as well. So thank you so much. That sounded amazing. And uh, just come back anytime. Okay. Okay. Will. Awesome. Okay. All right. And one, 100%, guys, talk to you later. 100% did not happen to any of them. No. Nope. That story. Yeah. So, Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming by. Flora and the Fireweeds. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Thank you to Flora and the Fireweeds once again for coming in. Absolutely uh, rocking one of their new tunes. They will be playing at the Snow Castle tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. You can get tickets during the day or get tickets at the door as part of the Chills and Thrills lineup, Back Bay Fusion Project, and Flora and the Fireweeds. Always very good. And a member of that band, also a member of this next band, who will we, put, we will be playing the world premiere of of their first single it's not going to be on their ep but this is one of the singles that they wanted to share they just locked up their uh, their first ep just a just a little while ago about a week ago as they finished uh, their final mixing and mastering on their ep uh they posted it on their facebook page if you don't like pit on facebook go like pit on facebook the legendary pit you know them as one of the tightest bands to come out of yellow knife uh they uh, absolutely uh, crush Every show, I've enjoyed them every time I've seen them. Well, except once. No, I'm joking. I've enjoyed them every time. And we are uh, delighted and honored to play one of their singles uh, that they recorded. One of the songs that, uh, one of their mainstays, one of the songs they've been playing since the very beginning. Pit, Pray Devil, world premiere on Cabin Radio. (laughs) 
Legendary Pits, Pray Devil, the uh, their first single that they've uh, uh, lovingly bestowed upon us. We are so proud to be able to play that, Pit. Just a wonderful band. Go f- like them on Facebook right now or at the Legendary Pit on Instagram as well. Yellow Knife's premier man-child boy band. And they play so tightly. They they really are that good. And uh, you can get that single, Pray Devil, on uh, on their band camp. It's going to be free until the release of their uh, EP, which is on March 21st, which, of course, also co- coincides with the Great Melt at Snow King Winter Festival uh, 25, Pup and Pit, at uh, 8 o'clock on the 21st inside the castle. Uh, go to thelegendarypit.bandcamp.com to uh, get that single uh, and download it and listen to it on repeat. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.